So, I wanted to seek the blessings of Radha Shamsundar, Radha Mata of Krishna Bhagavan, Pal Gopal, Gonita, Shila Prabhupada, Guru Maharaj, and the assembled devotees. And wanted to uh, talk about Lord Brahma's position today. Um, so, this is part of the Devatas. And really, the first per personality we're looking at is the creator of this universe, secondary creator of the universe. So, he's one of the Gunavatas. In the material world, there are three principal deities called the Tri Murti. Literally, three. Three Murti means three deities. They correspond to God's function of creation, sustenance, and destruction. So Brahma is the creator, is in charge of the Rajagun, quality of passion. So it's not that necessarily he's in passion, but he's in charge of the quality of passion. Lord Vishnu is the maintainer, he's in charge of Satogun, quality of goodness. And Lord Shiva is the destroyer, he's in charge of Tamagun, quality of ignorance. Of these three, only Vishnu is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Brahma is a jiva or ordinary living entity who is nonetheless very pure and powerful. And Shiva is practically the same as Vishnu, except that when Vishnu interacts with material nature, he transforms into Shiva. Brahma is given is a title given to the engineer and uni manager of the universe. He is the first created living entity within the universe. Supreme Personality God Krishna, in his role as Vishnu, creates the material world. He then empowers a Brahma to act as the engineer and manager within each universe. Of all the demigods in charge of generating various species of life and managing universal affairs, Brahma is the chief. So he is the head of all the demigods. He is also orig the original spiritual mentor of everyone within the universe. Krishna entrusts him with the sum total of all knowledge, the Vedas, by which everyone can attain success in life and ultimately return to the spiritual world. So he's given a big responsibility, not just of creation, but also to assist the jivas who are under his charge as well to regain their original constitutional position. So he's actually got a very uh, important role. Brahma or in turn sees to it that the Vedic knowledge is spread everywhere by his representatives. This mission is known as the Brahma Sampadaya, or school of theistic thought originating from Brahma. And uh, we actually belong to this Brahma Sampadaya. The first tier of universal management consists of three executive heads, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, which we just talked about as well. Now, uh, this is Mahavishnu. This is the original creator. And he, Mahavishnu, is an incarnation of an incarnation of incarnation of an incarnation of Krishna. <laughs> Known as Mahavishnu or Karana Daksha Vishnu, he lies on the casual ocean. When he breathes out, millions of universes come out the pores of his skin. And into each universe, into each universe expands the second Vishnu who is known as Garbhadokshay Vishnu. So he creates all the universes. He dives into the un each universe. You can see here, he's into each universe. And then again, he expands into every person known as Paramatma, Shirodakshay Vishnu. Each of the three are such powerful controllers that they are sometimes given equal status within medical literature and inaccurately called the Hindu trinity by Western scholars. Mm -hmm. 
The Srimad Bhagavatam explains that Vishnu is God or a full expansion of Krishna, whereas Brahma is, an in, is a finite soul. Shiva is in the category of his own, slightly less than God. Both Brahma and Shiva are servants of Vishnu, empowered by him for universal work. And this is uh, some qualities given, just to give an indication as to the position of Brahma compared to Shiva, Vishnu and Krishna. So number of qualities possessed by Brahma are 50. And all jivas have these 50 qualities, but we have them in very small number, amount. Brahma has them in full, therefore he is Brahma. Add another five to the qualities and we have Lord Shiva. So Jiva can never become Shiva. Add another five qualities and then that's Vishnu. So Shiva cannot become Vishnu. And then add another four qualities and we have Krishna. So Krishna is regarded to be complete. When a living entity has 50 qualities fully manifest, he is legible, eligible to be, become Brahma. When the living entity comes from the spiritual world, then as his level of purity is very high, he is likely to be given the post of Brahma. So when the soul first comes into, the, into this world, he's very powerful because he's just come from the spiritual world. So he may be given this position of Brahma. If there is no suitable living entity capable of acting in Brahma's capacity, then Garbhadakshaya Vishnu himself expands as Brahma and acts accordingly. So sometimes it might be that uh, there are no qualified living entities in that particular universe. And therefore, Garbhadakshaya Vishnu expands as Brahma. Roles in the universe. So Vishnu is in charge of the primary creation. So and when we saw Karadaksha Vishnu breathing out, that is the primary creation. He's also in charge of maintenance and the Murugudas. Brahma is in charge of secondary creation and the mode of passion. So when Garbhadaksha Vishnu enters into every universe, from Garbhadaksha Vishnu comes a lotus. And on top of the lotus flower is sitting the secondary creator, Brahma. Shiva is in charge of destruction and the mode of ignorance. Working under these powerful controllers are many demigods or devas empowered to fulfill universal duties. As departments within a local government manage the delivery of water and electricity, the devas oversee the material world. We should not mistakenly worship the devas as God. So this is an important point. Devas are very powerful. Because of their power, it, it would seem that they may be the supreme. But they're not. They are given those powers by the Lord. Just like within a local government, there are many departments to deliver water, electricity, and uh, various personalities will be given the power to enable that to happen. It doesn't mean that they are the local government. They represent the local government, yes, but they're not the local government. So we are indebted to them, the devas, but they supply life's necessities on God's behalf using his energies. And we can pay our debt to them by worshipping God, the Supreme. By satisfying Krishna, all his servants are satisfied. According to Vedic description, Brahma is the first form that emerges from Ishwar in the beginning of creation with specific nature and aspects and function. In Vedic literatures, we find a cosmic calendar that shows the cycle of ages and how to break out of it. So, this is, uh, yeah, we'll come across that in a few minutes. 
Krishna has three main energies. Um, he has his internal energy, which is the spiritual world. Then he has this world, the external energy. And we are the third energy, the marginal energy. The living entities, the soul or jivas. Because we can uh, alleviate between the spiritual world and the material world. Um, we can dwell either here if we want to serve Krishna in bliss and knowledge, or if we want to forget Krishna and be in darkness and suffer, we can be, be in the material world. That's why we call marginal. Sometimes we're here, sometimes we're there. One of Krishna's pastimes is to emanate and em emanate, sustain and reabsorb the material creation in periodic circles. And this Krishna does in the persons of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. So this is quite interesting because this material world goes in these cycles in order to give us the chance of getting out of this cycle. So Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu um, control these cycles and they're called Gunavatas. So material nature can act in three ways or three modes. When there's creation, construction, generation, procreation, material nature acts in the mode of passion. When there's sustenance, maintenance, preservation, endurance, nature is working in the mode of goodness. When there is destruction, decay, dissolution, devastation, nature acts in the mode of ignorance. So let's have a look at this creative process. The first Purush is Karandaksha Vishnu. So that's the original Maha Vishnu. From his skin holes, innumerable universes have sprung up, and in each and every universe, he expands again. The Purush enters as Garbhadakshaya Vishnu. He is lying within the half of the universe, which is filled with water of his own body. And a lotus sprout from the Vishnu's navel, uh, a sprout from Vishnu's navel, and then Brahma, known as a self-born, Swayambhu, is born at the top of, top of the lotus. Let me see if I've got a picture to show that. No, I haven't got a picture. Okay. However, Brahma, situated on the top and center of the lotus, could not see the world. So when he was up there, it was very bewildering for Brahma. What do I do? While moving his eyes in four directions to see, he obtained four heads. So that's how he gets his four heads, four heads in our universe. Brahma's bewilderment about the creation reveals that it is difficult to understand the mystery of creation by our mental thoughts and that Brahma's power to create is not his own but coming from the Lord. So this is good to understand. Brahma's powers are limited. Only when he's given, um, he's given the powers by Krishna that He's able to do his work, his job. Brahma contemplated, who am I situated at the top of this lotus? Where from has it sprouted? There must be something from which it is originating. He entered the lotus stem, but he could not trace out the root. So he went into the lotus and he went deep. But then even then he could not understand. He could not see the end of the lotus, the stem. So this stem is uh, humongous. Giving up on his unsuccessful search, he came to the top of the lotus and he meditated on the Lord. After a hundred human years of meditation, he heard tapa. So tap, tap means austerity. Tap, do austerity. And Saraswati, goddess of Nasingha, or oh, Consort of Nasingha, he gave him the Gopal Mantra. He gave him the Gopal Mantra. And he meditated on Go Kol, Golok. 
eventually he yeah, got darshan of the Lord. And this is what we are now um, doing the Brahma Samhita. Tomorrow we will do, uh, led by Karuna, um, where he, he has darshan of the Lord and he recites these magnificent prayers. So uh, this is really something which is extraordinary. Um, this Divyash Saraswati is distinct from Saraswati, the wife of Brahma. The Divya Saraswati is a divine spiritual goddess, an expansion of Radharani, Krishna's internal energy. The luster of the transcendental body of the Lord mocked the beauty of the coral mountain. His body was self-illuminating and by unparalleled dress and variegatedness was properly and was properly ornamented. So this was when Brahma had the vision of um, Lord Krishna. The Lord showed his lotus feet by raising them. Seeing all this, Brahma concluded that he is Lord Hari. In this way, the Lord inspired Brahma with the desire to create. Who, offered to, who began to offer prayers to the Lord. The Lord showed his... Uh, sorry. Brahma, who is the master of all demigod engineers, engaged in the perfect design and working of the universal order. Within the stem of the lotus, so now we're looking at the lotus, there are 14 divisions of planetary systems. And earthly planets are situated in the middle. So out of the 14, Earth is in the middle. Rur is in the middle. And the topmost system is called uh, upwards. There are other better planetary systems. And the topmost system is called Brahmalok or Satyalok. Downwards from the uh, earthly planets, planetary system, there are seven lower planetary systems inhabited by the Asuras and similar other materialistic beings. Ah, great. Here we go. So this is uh, the lotus coming from uh, the navel of Garbhadakshya Vishnu. And on top of the lotus is situated Brahma, who meditates. He goes down the lotus, but he has no joy in finding the end. And he has a word, Tapa, and Saraswati, the goddess of the consort of Nasimhadeva gives him the Gopal Mantra and he meditates on Gopal Mantra and he gets the darshan of Gopal. <laughs> and here Brahma is looking in the four directions trying to work out what to do and he gets his four heads. <laughs> and this is another close-up picture from on the top of the lotus. So he, he, as we already discussed, Brahma is usually Jiva, but you know sometimes he can, he can also be Krishna himself. But he's a Jiva who is um, called Gunavatar because Krishna has given him special powers to create, using the in ingredients furnished by Krishna and uh, following Krishna's foot blueprints. Brahma constructs the material universe. He first creates the four sons, the Kuma, Kumaras, the four Kumaras. These are uh, who, who, to help him with the expansion of the universe. They are described as the first mind born sons. However, they refuse his order to procreate because he told them, populate the un universe. But they said, no, 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 no. This life is too short. <laughs> We rather uh, meditate. And so instead, they devoted themselves to worship Brahman and to the practice of celibacy, practice the path of celibacy. That made Brahma furious. And from his anger came Rudra. So there you go. There's the four Kumaras. They're saying no to Brahma. He got so angry, Rudra was born from between his eyebrows. So that's Lord Shiva's manifestation in this work. Brahma then proceeded to create from his mind seven other sons, the Pajapatis. So these Pajapatis, they 
They're very powerful, great grandsires of the universe. They're the become the fathers of human race. Since all these sons were born from the, his mind, they are called Manasaputras or son of mind. And according to the Bhagavad Puran, their names are, so these are the Pajapatis, Marichi, Atri, Angira, Pulatsya, Pulaha, Kratu, Brugu, Vashisht, Daksh, Narat. So these are the seven Pujapatis. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, oh, eight, nine, ten. A few more than seven. <laughs> Swayambhu, Manu, and Satarup were generated from his body as well. So this is right at the beginning of the creation. Then Bhagavad Gita tells us about uh, all this, about the massive length of Brahma's day and night. And this is the word, Sahasra Yuga Paryantam Aharyat Brahmano Viduha Ratrim Yuga Sahasrantam Tehorata Vidu Janaha. Yes, Baba Ben? Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji and all the devotees. Uh, just a quick question. You said all the Manas Putra were born from Lord Vishnu? Uh, the his body? No, uh, Lord Brahma's mind. Lord, Lord Brahma's mind, the, the yeah. seven. Yes. Uh, they are Manas Putra, is that right? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. And then the, the names you gave. Yes, actually it's 10. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, actually Narad is not a Pajapati, but he is regarded to be one of the sons of Brahma born from his mind. Mine, yeah. All right. And then you said two were born from his hands? Body. His body. Yeah. Oh, his, his body. body. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Because I, I remember this also. We done it last year. We did it last time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. By human calculation, 1,000 great ages taken together is the duration of Brahma's day. Also, such is the duration of his night. So... This is, uh, again, we'll have a look at it, very quick look at his uh, lifespan. One 12 hour day of Kalpa is 4.32 billion years of human years. So one 12 hours is 4.32 billion years. His night is the same. <laughs> so one whole day is 8.64 billion years. 30 days is 259 billion years. 12 months or one year is, 3.11 trillion and 50 years is 156 trillion and 100 years one full lifetime of brahma is 311 trillion 40 billion years that's inconceivable inconceivable and if we look at just one mahayuk one mahayuk uh it's very very it's like uh, 43.2 seconds for Lord Brahma. One Mahayuk is Satya, Treta, Dwapa and Kali Yuk uh, is one Mahayuk. It's 43 seconds. <laughs> so one second of Brahma is 4 million, 4.3 4 billion years. Is it? Oh no, sorry. One second of Brahma is 100,000 years. Pass. One second is 100,000 years. So, he's got a long, long, long lifespan. And this is, just gives us a little idea. This is his full... <laughs> So this is his life. One day in his life has one day in his life um, has 14 manmantaras, 4.32 billion years, 
and one 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 tara one 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 tara is seventy one mahayugas, three hundred six years, million years, and one divya yuga is four point three two million years. So we are now the first day of his fifty first year. It's known as Shweta Varaha. And within this day, six month mantras have already passed. We're in the seventh. And also 27 Mahayugas have passed. And we're in the 28th Mahayug, 28th Kali Yug. So if we look exactly where we are in Brahma's time, 51st year, and it's first day, 1128 in the morning. Okay, so these are inconceivable numbers, but that's what the Vedic scriptures explain. On a grand cosmic scale, Brahma is an overseer. He manages the process of creation within this universe. At the beginning of each of his days, his varieties of lifespan form. His, the all varieties of life forms appear. When his night comes, there's a partial annihilation until the next day of Brahma. When he sets everything in motion all over again. Although Brahma lives for such a vast amount of time and has such awesome responsibilities, we can get a rough idea what his life, we can get a rough idea what his life is like. Brahma starts his days by meditating on the Supreme. He prays. He may engage in this Lord's service in the creation of the material world. And that I may not be materially affected by my works. For thus, I am able to give up the false prestige of being the creator. So very, very nice prayer. He doesn't want to be. <laughs> Although he holds such an exalted place in our universe, Brahma acknowledges God's supremacy. He does not want to become illusioned into thinking. He is independently powerful. He wants to remember always that the original source of everything is Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Just as a gardener doesn't create seeds, simply sows them and waters them to make a garden grow. So Brahma does not create life, but receives power from the Supreme to place the jivas, the souls, into certain types of bodies. Also, in that order, and uh, being burgers and the Nichi can burger. So at the beginning of this day, Brahma places each one of us, each jiva, into a particular body. Even Baba, okay, sorry. Okay. Okay. So at the beginning of that uh, process, we are put into a particular body. According to our previous karmas and pre previous desires, as Brahma's days wears on, we transmigrate from one body to another, sometimes to an upper lower planetary system, sometimes to a lower sometimes to the body of a pigeon, sometimes to that of a prince, until after 4.32 billion earth years have passed. Lord Brahma's day ends. Then we go into a dormant state. So we again are in a dormant state for 4.32 billion years until the next day begins. All of this may seem fantastic to us, but as Einstein, uh, Einstein learns some years ago, time is relative. Take, for example, an amoeba whose lifespan is less than an hour. So his one hour is equal to his 100 years. But imagine his one hour compared to our life. If we could explain our lifespan to the amoeba, just Think how flabbergasted he would be. In the same way, although we may sound, we may be astounded by Brahma's lifespan, to him it seems quite normal, and if anything, rather short. 
Brahma, however, sees our futile wanderings and feels compassion. He sees us suffering from various types of miseries, anxiety, anger, disease, insomnia, natural disturbances because of our forgetfulness. The material miseries are without factual existence for the soul. He assures us still many of us refuse to hear about our actual activity in the identity and relationship with the Supreme Lord. And as a result, we keep on suffering in this material world. His consort is Saraswati, the goddess of learning and Gayatri. He has many other names. Hiranyagarbha, Viraj, Pajapati, Pitamaha, Vidi, Lokesh, Dritta, Vishwakarma, Kanja. Brahma is commonly depicted as follows. A red or golden complexioned bearded man with four hands and four heads. His four heads represent the four Vedas and point to the four cardinal directions. His hands hold no weapons, rather symbols of knowledge and creation. In one hand, he holds the sacred Vedas. Second, he holds the mala, the beads. In the third, he holds the surva, laden uh, type uh, symbolizing means to feed sacrificial fire. And in the fourth, he holds a kamandalu, water pot. So there you go. Here he's got a flower. He's got a flower. His four mouths are credited with creating the four Vedas. He sits on a lotus dressed in white or pink. He is shown in a meditative mood, lost in his thoughts with eyes half closed. The vehicle of Brahma is a swan, beautiful, graceful bird, which symbol symbolically represents the buddhi or discriminating intelligence. There's only one major temple dedicated to him in Pushkar. <laughs> Some consider him worship, to be worshipped indirectly through the chanting of Gayatri Mantra, since Gayatri is one of his consorts. Many pastimes are depicted in the scriptures regarding his interaction with the Supreme Lord. Prayers to, the, to Vishnu with demigods for the Lord to descend. So often when the demigods are in trouble, Brahma will go to um, the Lord and ask for help. Brahma also kidnapped the gopas and the calves um, to test Krishna. He met Krishna at Dwarka. We talked about that a few days ago. There you go. Yeah, all the other Brahm, thank you. All the other Brahmas came at the same time. And he was amazed. Wow. He was thinking, I'm the only Brahma. But then he saw so many other Brahmas. He met Lord Vishnu with the Adik Mas. That's right. With um, the month of uh, Purushottam. Now, also, Brahma is not generally worshipped. Um, so, and there's a, I very briefly explain a pastime as to why. Uh, one time he was doing a yagya, and Mother um, Saraswati was late for the yagya. So the Brahmins, they advised him, the sages, they advised him, you need to get the yagya done now because it's the auspicious time. But you don't have a wife sitting next to you. So at that time, um, Gayatri was presented to him and he, he, it was a quick marriage ceremony. She sat next to him, the yagya was done. Then Saraswati Ma came and she was shocked to see Gayatri next to Brahma and she cursed him. You will not be worshipped anywhere except uh, he's worshipped in one place only on earth, which is Pushkar. So that's the uh, pastime of Brahma. We uh, will... Uh, carry on with the devatas on on monday any questions any comments uh, by anybody Prabhu, the gayatri mantra 
Yes. It's a kind of sort of Brahma, did you say? Sh Gayatri. It? Gayatri is, yeah. And the Gayatri mantra, uh, Gayatri is present there. Uh, it's um, Gayatri is her poetry. And because the Gayatri mantra originates from her, in one sense. Okay. Yeah, in, and then, so in one sense, we are regarding to worship Brahma when we chanting the Gayatri Mantra. Some people can think like that. In the, in the Gaudiya philosophy, it's a little different. We don't, uh, when, we, when we chant the Gayatri, um, it's actually either the sun god who is worshipped or actually Krishna. Jiva Goswami actually explains it's Shivaji Radharani who's worshipped. <laughs> um, Taraswati Mata also is the consort of Brahma. She's the original so, consort. Yeah. Yes. So you, you said something about Gayatri being upset. Well, sorry, I didn't get no, that. No, Saraswati was upset because what happened? They did a yakya, and Saraswati was late. So they married Brahma to Gayatri <laughs> oh, to, okay. to have a wife in the Yagya. <laughs> and Saraswati came and she, whoa, she got upset. Who is this Gayatri? And she cursed Brahma <laughs> that you, you will not be worshipped on earth. Except his oh, worship. Is that why there is no deity of Brahma on earth? Yeah, except in Pushkar. Except in Pushkar. Pushkar is in India. Yes, uh, it's in Rajasthan. Okay. Oh, we have it. Brahma deity there. There's a Brahma temple there. That's the okay. only place there in in on Earth. Well, one of the only places on Earth where there's a Brahma. So I oh. uh, finish when Prabhuji finish when did um, Mataji yes, finish? Yeah. yeah. You know, yes, just, Mataji. Okay, sorry, I'm, I just wanted to ask. One. Not, it's not question. It's just huh. this is the first time I think I'm getting in my head that um, because Vishnu was doing this uh, yagna, and Gayatri said Gayatri Mata said near her, and then Saraswati Mata came and gave the crush, and that's why there is no temp, no no temple, but it's not worship anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Lord Vishnu. Mm -hmm. So it's good that I, I, today I found out why he's only not worship everywhere. Only one temple. Only and that one is place. Pushkar. Pushkar. Yeah. Pushkar, yeah. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. And very, very interesting today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lord Brahma Ki Jai. Lord Brahma Ki Jai. Yeah. Thank you.